What's up, everybody? Welcome. Guy here. And I am, uh, it's Monday. It's Monday morning. Uh, I saw Bruce Springsteen on uh, Sunday night at Chase Center. It was a great show. For most of you, you know, that is not why I sound this way. I wasn't screaming at the concert last night. Vocal cord surgery just over a week ago. Doctor tells me recovery is going good. So this is how I sound right now. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't put my body or my voice at risk to talk. So I'm going to try and continue on just because I, you know, I did like two shows last week and just out of the rhythm. I don't like, I don't like taking that much time out of the rhythm uh, and trying to get back in the rhythm takes time. So uh, if you want to listen to this voice, you know, thanks. That's your prerogative. Appreciate it. If you're listening to the podcast, uh, I've been pushing it and pushing it and I'm going to fire this thing back up soon. The, uh, the, the mailbag iTunes, Apple podcasts, leave a review five stars. Thank you. In that review, leave a question. And that is how we, uh, jumpstart the Hey Guy mailbag. So please do that. Uh, inspired to work it's a little, it's a little better today, by the way, than it was a couple of days ago. Um, inspired today. I will tell you what inspires me today. Springsteen, who I saw perform Sunday night, inspires me today. He was born September 23rd, 1949. He will be 75 years old in September. He's 74. He was, but just for reference, he was born two years before Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays made their big league debuts in 1951 his show last night whoo his show last night 16 people on the stage okay he's got four guitars including his he's got a bass player he's got two piano keyboard players and they each have like two keyboards he's got four people in the horn section he's got four people in the backup singer section he's got the drummer max and he's got his voice it is incredible. The, the effort, the energy, the work ethic, the, uh, the joy, the crowd uh, engagement. And the thing I love the most about him, or well, one of the things, is he's not taking, like he's going three hours, all right? He's not taking 20, 30 seconds, but he doesn't take actually any time between songs. One song is ending and he's like, one, two, three, and the next thing starts up. He did a song. Uh, called, uh, it's, it's one of his, you know, it's like a song from 20 years ago, My City of Ruin. I think the song was 11 minutes long. It's like being at a church, I mean, like a gospel church service. It was incredible. So anyway, like I'm not, I like Springsteen. I respect, I, I'll watch a Springsteen doc. I'll listen to some songs. That was my first show, probably my last show. Uh, so I'm not like a Springsteen guy, quote unquote, but holy smokes, it was an awesome performance. It was great. It was great. So anyway, uh, I just, it's 74 years old, man, going strong. Klaus is 75. Uh, yeah, the whole thing is just wild. They're all singing at the same time. They're all banging at the same time instruments. Max is just murdering the drums. I mean, absolutely murdering the drums. So anyway, all right. We are four weeks away to the NFL draft. Four weeks, just a little more. Three and a half weeks, really, a little less than four full weeks. And I was thinking about the uh, about the uh, the likelihood that the 49ers get either Trent Williams' replacement in this draft or just an everyday starter. And I want to know exactly how likely that was. Another mock draft and another Jordan Morgan pick. If you missed the conversation I had with Jeff Schwartz about – uh, the offensive line and who the Niners should, may, could draft. Go listen to that. The conclusion is the odds are good that Jordan Morgan out of Arizona could be the guy. And I was looking at an NFL.com mock draft today from Eric at home, another Jordan Morgan pick. So there's a lot of offensive line there and there's a lot of uh, Jordan Morgan kind of vibes there. So I went back through the last 25 drafts this morning to try and figure out what are the odds that the Niners get an all pro? What are the odds that they get a good player? And in the last 25 drafts, 14 offensive linemen have been taken 
in the range of the Niners pick. Now, for the purpose of this, I used the last five picks is uh, the last five picks of the first round. Okay, last five picks of the first round. So 32, 31, 30, 29, 28. Okay, guys had to be drafted. In the last 25 drafts, 14 got offensive linemen have been drafted in that spot. And um, the hit rate is like 50%. That has been a good pick. Not like 50%. The hit rate is 50%. Seven of the 14 guys drafted in since 1999 in the last five picks of the first round at the offensive line position. So we're talking tackles, guards, but one center, Eric Wood. Um, seven of those 14 guys have been a good pick for the team. And three of those guys have been all pros. Okay, so 21% of the guys drafted there have been all pros. Uh, the Niners drafted one of them, Joe Staley. Logan Mankins is the other all pro drafted in that range. Ryan Ramchick of the uh, Saints is the other guy drafted in that range. There have been seven guys that are, uh, uh, including those three, so four others that are just good picks for their team. Okay. Jermaine Afidi, good pick for his team. I mean, we could debate that one, right? He was a four year starter. He's on his third team now. He started for somebody else. He, he started basically his first five years in the league. And um, I would call that a solid pick. I mean, that is like a, a McGlinchey pick. And the Niners did a McGlinchey pick in the lottery, essentially, right? So they would they would take a McGlinchey level pick here at the end of the first round. Let's just be clear about that clearly is not the Trent Williams replacement. Like in Tomlinson, I put him in the category of solid pick for his team. He's an everyday starter. Now, he's not a Trent Williams replacement, but he's an everyday starter. Eric Wood, everyday starter for the team that drafted him. Cole Strange, two years ago. Good first year, rookie year for the Patriots. Started every game. Last year was starting every game. Suffered a knee injury. But, I mean, a very promising pick. Uh, there was a guy a few years ago named Kendall Simmons, who was a five-year starter at guard, right guard. And... Um, you know, I counted Mark Colombo, even though you could argue I shouldn't, because he was not a good pick for his team. He was a good pick eventually, but he was uh, uh, injury plagued in his first few years in the league. So you're looking at like, it's basically 50-50 at the end of the first round that you're getting an offensive lineman that's going to be a starter for you. And it's uh, three out of 14. You're getting an all pro and the, and the Niners already did it once now. Every draft is different. I mean, this year, if the Niners draft an offensive lineman at 31, it might be the seventh offensive lineman taken in that draft. For comparison, uh, 2007, the Niners draft Joe Staley. Joe Staley was the third tackle taken in that first round. The third tackle. Uh, that's not going to, you know, you're not getting the third best tackle on the board this year. You're not, you may not even be getting a tackle. You, you may not be getting the seventh best tackle on the board. You might be getting a guard. We'll see. Uh, Joe Thomas was the first pick back in 07. So every draft is different. This is a very unscientific measure. The sample size over the last 25 drafts is small, only 14 guys. But I think you've got to be, if you're the Niners, very realistic about the future here. And the possibility, the real possibility, I think, that your next great offensive lineman he's a very expensive player a player that you have to sign as a free agent and you know that doesn't really happen that much a player that you have to trade for and even that doesn't happen as much it feels like it happens more than the free agency for a blue chip left tackle those guys just don't really become available Trent Williams did the second time right not when the Niners acquired him in a trade but when he became a free agent but for the most part these guys are impossible to find. Um, maybe it's a guy they draft next year because they're able to trade a few assets and move up. But if you weren't getting the first round pick you wanted for Debo Samuel before, and you're not getting the first round pick that it would take to part with Brandon Ayuk now, you're not getting the first round pick that it will take to draft a blue chip left tackle if you were to trade Debo Samuel in 2025, right? That's You're not getting the ninth pick of the draft for Debo Samuel in a year.
let alone now, let alone last year or ever. So it just highlights, you know, how hard it is going to be for them to find the next Trent Williams. Now to, to, to field a team that can win the Super Bowl this year, they don't have to find the next Trent Williams. That's the beauty. The goal right now is for this guy just to be in the category of Lake and Tomlinson, uh, Cole Strange, maybe Jermaine Afidi, like a starter for you. I mean, honestly, the Cole, Cole Str- the, their version of Cole Strange here would be a home run pick. His starter, great, fantastic. And I wonder if looking at this list would in any way scare them away not scare them away, but dissuade them from drafting an offensive lineman at all. I don't think it will because I think it's just so clear how badly they need to take a shot at maybe at minimum getting an offensive starter uh, and perhaps, perhaps striking, you know, gold again with a Joe Staley or maybe a Logan Mankins type. The odds aren't great, but your hope is, that, you know, it's hope. It's all hope. It's always hope with these guys. So um, that's the situation. So just understand when you're reading these mocks, I, I got to understand, like I did it so I could understand what are we really talking about here? How likely is this really, you know, are you going to end up with Joe Staley or are you going to end up with Josh Garnett? Like Josh Garnett was an offensive lineman pick at the end of the first round. Uh, Gabe Karimi was an offensive lineman draft at the end of the first round. Isaiah Wilson, who was taking the, the the same draft as Cole Strange, that was a whiff. Uh, Aaron Gibson and uh, Derek Sherrod. So there's the whole list of guys right there. There's the 14 guys going back to um, going back to 1999, last 25 drafts. And um, you know, we'll see, we'll see. So there you go. There's the list. Robbie says uh, all these mock drafts and shows talking about tackle when the Niners are going to draft a defensive tackle. I don't think they will. Uh, Given the money they've spent on the defensive line, uh, every uh, move that they made, to me, only made it less likely that they would go defensive line um, in this draft Uh, with the first pick. Invader says college offensive tackles aren't as good coming out of college as they were in Joe Staley's day. That's interesting. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but I hadn't really thought about it. Uh, But that is an interesting thought. Third string all pro says, I'm so glad we don't have to deal with Caleb Williams, his pink nail polish phone case and lipstick. Well, he's, if you've got a, if you don't have a quarterback, I think you should happily deal with it because uh, the guy can play. I agree with you. I think they should draft O lineman, but they won't. LOL. I, I think they will. I think they're going to. I don't think they're going to take a receiver. You know, I, uh, I, I, it comes up a lot, but here's how I would, this is how the test I use to evaluate every idea that people have for the 49ers. In the draft, first pick for the first pick, and the, the the lens that I think you should filter everything through is: Do they need this guy now, or do they need this guy later? Right, and you can always convince yourself that with that first pick, you can do something a little bit developmental. Uh, you can always argue that maybe we do something a little bit developmental, but um, receiver is not the move this year. You got Juwan Jennings, you got Brandon, you got Debo Samuel. Why would you draft a receiver in the first round this year? If your goal is how do we win a championship this year? Well, the place that you need the most help this year to win a championship is offensive line, is defensive line, is cornerback, is linebacker, right? Those are the spots, I think. You 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 go, could we use you could always use a safety, you can bring Gibson back, but you got Hufunga coming back, you got Jaya Brown. You need a third corner. Oh, they added their third corner in free agency. Okay, we're not going to go there in the first round. And they're not going to go there in the first round anyway. You need another tight end? Well, we'll see by Wednesday. Maybe they just address the other tight end issue. Do you need another receiver for the future? Yes, absolutely. Do you need a Ray Ray McLeod replacement? Yes, you do. You're not doing that in the first round. Oh, well, let's do that in the first round. And then next year he'll be the Debo replacement. Boy, that's a projection. I don't, I don't love that. How many targets is that guy if you draft him in the first round this year? How many targets is that guy getting? this year on this team not many 
not many. Is it good? Is it good foresight for the future? Yes, it is. But I think the potential, if here's another way to look at it, where could you play the most snaps with your first round player? Look at the roster and try to figure out where the most snaps could come from with your first round pick. And to me, by far and away, the greatest potential for snaps is on the offensive line. Your third, your, your other corner spot, if you were to do it, receiver is well down the list. Hell, tight end is much higher. Tight end is much higher. So that's why I wouldn't go receiver. Um, that's what, why I wouldn't go receiver in the first round. Corner in the first round and maybe tackle in the second. You know, it feels like if you go back and watch the Jeff Schwartz conversation that we had, Jeff played the league. Really, I'm telling you, if you if you care at all about the Niners first pick, you should go watch that video or listen to the pod. Um, and part of the thing I wanted to get out of him and we did is like, okay, how many kind of first round adjacent offensive linemen are? Like if we're drafting the offensive lineman in the second round at the back end, are you getting something close to quality as you're in the first round? And it was clear talking to him that after a round Joshua Morgan, in his evaluation, things really kind of fall off uh, in terms of the level of prospect. That the end of the first round is right about, the beginning of the second round is right about where it starts to fall off. So you are getting a significantly better prospect at offensive line at the end of the first round than you are at the end of the second round. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not going to be a miss and somebody isn't going to get a guy uh, in the second round that's a good player or the third round or the fourth round. Hell, the Niners do it in the fifth round. But that is where it appears this this draft is. Uh, Colton says is he, if he falls into the Niners' lap, Jackson Powers Johnson. Yeah, I mean – you know, I'll go back to not to quote Jeff. Jeff's thing was like, you don't take a center, you just don't take a center that high. But he's a really good pick. Uh, question, thoughts on Kyle saying that Ronnie Bell might be the kick returner. Fine, whatever. Sure. I mean, he's on the roster. Um, you know, I, I said this last year. I think I got a little, I probably uh, was a little hard on him. Uh, for a seventh round pick. Um, but uh, they got a lot of guys that can do it. I know they still, people look at them, they need the Ray Ray replacement. I would be very interested in like, can Elijah Mitchell do it? I'd be interested in running backs. You know, the pressure on the, uh, the, 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 the pressure on the returner to catch the ball cleanly is a little bit lower here because nobody moves till he touches the ball anyway. So I would be open to a running back, a guy who runs between, quote unquote, between the tackles. I think a running back would be more interesting here. I think Elijah Mitchell here in particular is interesting. Bell has fumbling issues. I know. I well, whatever. I just, whatever. Like, I'll, I'll worry about what Ronnie Bell's doing later. I'm just telling you where I would start. I would start with a running back. I would start with Elijah Mitchell here. Roberto says you should be resting your voice. I shouldn't. Doctor said, I mean, you might prefer not to hear me sounding like this. And you have uh, more than ample right to feel that way. The doctor says I'm good. I can talk. It's just, it only sounds terrible, which is bad. I'd rather, I'd rather it sound good and it feels bad. But folks, that's the way it was before. I've had people say to me, you know, why did you, uh, there's nothing wrong with your voice. Yeah, it mostly sounded fine to you but it was not fine. Uh, I'd be dealing with it for a year. It would get tired. I, I couldn't, I call games play by play like on TV and I couldn't use my voice the way that I wanted to in those situations. And so that's why I had a uh, little, uh, little surgery. Get Debo to return kicks and punts. Great. Yep. I'm for it. I'm good with that. I mean, I would use Debo. I'd be, uh, I'd be interested in McCaffrey. I, I think the thing that I'll be very interested in, though, first and foremost, before I'm like adamant that, yeah, Christian McCaffrey should be doing this, is are there are there big plays to be made in the kickoff game? Um, I talked to the person who invented this kickoff recently, 
He's not allowed to talk publicly about it. He does not work for the NFL. And um, I'm going to keep talking to him because one thing that I really want to know is, are there big plays in this? And I think we'll see it as time goes on. Are there big plays available? Really? The blocking schemes seem pretty rudimentary. So do people figure anything out? Or are we just looking for like six yards after contact? Um, but, uh, you know, I'd be intrigued by the possibility of using Christian for this, of using Debo for this. And as I said, I my initial reaction is like, should we use running backs here? Because the, the catch is far less pressure. Um, I know that, uh, I mean, Ju- Juice can catch punts. Juice can do it. But, uh, I, you, I mean, hell, Ayuk might be good at this. <laughs> you know, Brandon might be good at it. Josh Dobbs. Is vocal cord surgery covered by insurance? Yes, it is. It's a, it's just, yeah, it's not. I mean, I elected to do it, but it's not. Oh, just, just, uh, yes, yes. I had a bump. We got rid of it. Uh, Colton says, uh, JPJ can play multiple positions, ran great schemes that can translate under crystal ball and landing and Kyle loves a smart center. Yeah. And he can play guard. I'm, I'm a fan. Like I'm into it. I, you could play him a guard athletic. Did he score a touchdown last year? Or maybe he had a catch. I remember he did something. He did something very athletic. Uh, Colton, I'm, I'm on team, uh, Jackson powers, Johnson. So. I'm into it. I'm into it. I just look at this like where where do they where do they get the most snaps this year? And as we saw with Ray Ray, and as we've seen even with Juwan Jennings, you don't get the most snaps at number three or number four receiver on this team. So I'm not saying don't draft a receiver. I am for them drafting a receiver. I don't think that Danny Gray or Ronnie Bell are going to be catching a bunch of passes from Brock Purdy in his future. So you got to keep going. You got to keep adding guys. Um, you know, they've whiffed, they've whiffed recently at, at receivers really since the Jennings pick, but that was a great pick. Uh, they, um, whiffed a tight end, you know, last year they did not add a tight end. That's going to be clutch for them. I know, uh, I just saw Larry Kruger said that he thinks Cam Latu is going to have a big year this year. I'm less optimistic. I'm hopeful. I mean, it'd be great, but you know, I don't see much reason to be optimistic on that until he shows otherwise. He didn't look great before he got hurt. He got hurt, which means he's had less time to uh, get the experience that you need through a rookie season. And, um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I'm great. I, he'll get his chance. But I, I don't really think there's any evidence there. I think if that's what we think, then it's just kind of ho- hopeful. Um, so... Mike says, perhaps it will be best to hold off on using McCaffrey, Debo, and kickoffs till we see how teams actually scheme these plays. I agree with that, Mike. I agree. I would not put them back there as uh, basically test dummies until we figure it out. I would put Elijah Mitchell back there. I would put Elijah Mitchell. Danny Gray may be cut soon. Yeah, I've been on Reddit today, on TMZ today, so... I won't, I won't spread rumors or falsities, but go to the Niners Reddit and see what they're saying. You know, it's uh, – Kyle better not put McCaffrey back there. McCaffrey was an excellent returner at, in college. He could still do it. Um, you know, the, the field position game is critical. Can the Niners block it? Can the Niners block it? Who are they putting out there to block? Are they putting offensive linemen out there? Are they putting tight ends out there? You know, um, it's a, I, I, I'm very, I do find this kickoff thing very interesting. Um, how teams are going to do it, what type of players they're going to use. I think just wait, the way people is, is going to approach it, are going to approach it. To me, it's even more interesting than like what it, uh, it's more, how they're going to approach it to me is more interesting than, oh, now I have to watch kickoffs like five years from now. I don't know if it'll still be interesting, but I do think just watching teams try to manage it this year is going to be interesting. Jesse says, uh, Elijah being back there, not sure about that one, man. I mean, the guy's constantly injured, very injury prone. Exactly. So use him while he's healthy. 
you know, he's, he, he gets he hurts a hamstring on a Wednesday in practice. So use him while he's healthy. Just what McCaffrey needs, more touches, says Frank. Chris, headline on Reddit, Danny Gray finally makes an impact. Yeah. Yeah, go to Reddit. Go to Reddit. Check it out. Um, all right. By the way, uh, moving, we, we are moving forward on, the, we're making progress every day on hats. I've been, I had a listener reach out, reach out, Steve Peterson, who uh, this is what he does. This is, he's in the merch game. And so we've, uh, we've been going through stuff. We've got a few good ideas. Um, I think we have something that's going to turn out to be really cool. Um, a couple things. But uh, those of you who's asked, this is, I made like a one of one half for myself. A couple samples, actually. Actually, well, hold on one sec. I got a I got a box of uh, all sort of uh, all sorts of samples here from Richardson, so we've been going through it, and um, and we're gonna pick some stuff and, and make some samples and and then get what looks good and uh, you know make stuff available in the merch. So appreciate uh, those of you who've been asking because I've had a lot of questions like I saw your hat, or you can actually make a hat. Yeah, yeah, we're moving forward, and and there's gonna be stuff. Some of you may not want to wear, or maybe you would. I don't know this like what I'm wearing here for those of you listening it's a hey guy hat i think we're gonna have something that's not even me related that's gonna turn out to be cool i think i think we're working on it so all right um that's that for this little quickie just trying to get my kind of get back in the rhythm uh and uh you know if I'm, i'm sorry about the voice i am i wish it was better but i'd rather do this than than do nothing so uh Thanks for bearing with. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. More content coming this week. Updates coming this week. And uh, again, get in that mailbag. That's good content. I appreciate when you guys do it. Apple Podcast. Leave a review. Leave a question on Apple Podcast. And we'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Later.